testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. We are back. It was a fun weekend. Uh, we're going to get into uh, the two main events, uh, the two big fights on Saturday night. Uh, we're not going to get into uh, the Dubois victory, the Dubois destruction, four knockdowns in just over, you know, about four minutes. Um, we're going to probably do another video on, on Dubois tomorrow, uh, get into his call out of Joshua and see if he's ready for that and, and I'll take on Dubois. But we're going to focus on uh, the, the, the Laura decision. Uh, and, and the uh, razor thin, closer than expected, which I expected, uh, post-style Ramirez fight, which Ramirez takes a uh, majority decision. Very close, very competitive. A lot of people thought Ramirez was going to stop him or win wide. That did not happen, although Ramirez did defend his title. Um, you know, the, the, between the two fights, one of the cards gave me – there was one, one of the fights. I had major issues with the scorecards, and that's probably going to surprise you. Uh, but let's start uh, with the Cuban legend. get into that um but it, it, you can still see the skills and the craftiness with laura is still there he's still got good pop is it enough though against the top guys at 154 it's enough for vendetti and it's enough for uh, canelo alvarez's older brother and this was really a wasted year um for lauder you know it's been a wasted 12 months fighting canelo's brother and and, and vendetti i mean these Guys aren't near his level. I know they gave one of the judges found four rounds to give the Vendetti, but he won zero rounds. That that scorecard is ridiculous. I and mean, the scorecards is kind of indicative of Laura's career. I mean, awful scorecards. He beat Paul Williams, one of the worst decisions I've ever seen. Another terrible decision. Although not as bad as the Paul Williams was his loss to Canelo. He clearly won that fight too. So Laura, and, and we're we're judging it and we're judging Laura on what he did in the ring and not what the judges did to him. He's got wins over Paul Williams. And Canelo Alvarez. And then his draws, Castano was a draw is probably the right decision. And um the Malina, although you could argue Castano won that fight. And then uh the King Molina fight. 
he lost that fight, and he was lucky to get a draw. So, I mean, scorecards have always been weird with Laura fights, and this was just another example of that. Um, where does Laura go from here? Um, it looks like, and I would imagine, Laura's going to fight. He's called them out already. The winner of Charlo Rosario. We're picking Jamal Charlo. Obviously, those guys know each other well. Um, I, I think that bodes well for the Cuban. Um, if Rosario wins, boy, uh, Rosario might be the goods. So depending on who wins that fight, because either man could win that fight, the, the Charlo-Rosario fight we're talking about. I'm going to pick Charlo. If Charlo wins, I, I, I think Laura knows him too well, uh, having both trained at Ronnie Shields. Uh, you know, Charlo's brother, Jamal, still trained at Ronnie Shields. They know each other really well. I, I think Laura is a smarter, craftier fighter. Although, so is Jamal. But I, I think that is Laura's advantage. I think that plays him. I think he's going to know. He's not going to give away early rounds because he's, he's going to know what to expect with, with, with Jamal. Um, I, I think he can outbox him. Tony Harrison was outboxing him. I think Laura does an even better job of that. You know, Laura is so natural and so smooth in there. I mean, he really is like silk. He's just so smooth. And, and I, I think he's going to win enough rounds. Um, to beat Charlo, just based on the natural gifts, his southpaw stance, the jab, the straight left. I, I think he can, if he stays up, which I think he will, stays on his feet for 12 rounds, I, I think he gets the defining victory he, he, he deserves, right? Because he got robbed against Paul Williams and Cadell. This, at 37, I think there's still enough gas in the tank to get him past uh, Jamel Charlo. If Rosario wins, and if Rosario, right, because I can only see Rosario beating Jamel Charlo by stoppage. I can't see him out boxing anyone because I don't think he's that good. But he is a force. He has a ton of power. His boxing skills aren't bad, although they're not nearly as good as Jamel Charlo's. Uh, but if he wins, I would imagine it's by stoppage or he beats him up. If he beats up Jamal Char uh, Jamel Charlo and then he goes into the Laura fight, man, that could be a changing of the guard right there. I I've always considered Laura the best at 154. For years now, he just doesn't really have the wins to back it up because ha he's had him taken away from him. Um, and then he had troubles getting fights. And even the Hurt fight, I thought, I mean, Laura's lost to Hurt. I thought Laura won that fight too. But that was so close. That was our fight of the year. Um, I think finally at 37, Laura wins his next fight if it's against Jamal Charlo, which I think it will be. If it's Rosario, all bets are off because I'm going to have to go back and re-examine Rosario should he beat Jamal Charlo. Um, but let me know what you think. How does Jamel do against uh, each of those two guys? Does Jamel is Jamel going to fight? Because I truly believe that Jamel will fight the winner of those fights, probably January, February uh, of 2021. Um, but let me know what y'all think. Um, uh, leave your thoughts, comments on that. Uh, give me your predictions, uh, and let me know if you think that fight's going to happen, and who do you think's going to win between Charlo and Rosario, and then how the winner of that fight do against Laura next year. To our other fight, our, I mean, really entertaining fight, fun fight to watch. J.C. Ramirez takes a close, you could say controversial decision over uh, a game. Victor Postal, former WBO champ. Um, So, uh, we picked officially, we picked Ramirez. We went back and forth, I went back and forth on this. So, technically, I got it right, but Postal... And I wanted to pick Postal because I think Postal is really good. He's going to win one of these fights because he's good. He'll figure it out. But I couldn't do it because Ramirez, how, how good he looked against Hooker. And I think that may have been kind of a one-off. I don't think Ramirez is as good as he performed against um, – I don't think Ramirez is as good as he performed against Hooker. I, I don't think he can duplicate that performance, right? And you can see that. He was getting hit with a ton of jabs. He was getting hit with right hands. If he would have fought this fight against Hooker, Hooker would have stopped him. Right, Postal's got no power. Postal hit him with a million touches. We scored the fight for Postal, uh, 115, 130. Really, I, I think what this comes down to is how you scored the last two rounds. Right? Uh, we had a 5-5. Five, five. I had a 5-5, five, five, and, and so did my uh, co-host, Matt Hunter, on uh, MCR Podcast. He had a 5-5. Five, five. I scored the last two rounds wire close for Postal. I gave him the 11th and the 12th. He gave him to uh, Ramirez. He scored at 115-113 for Ramirez. I scored at 115-113 uh, for Postal. 
I don't have any problem with the decision. All the scorecards that were handed in were completely reasonable. Uh, 115, 113, 116, 112 for Ramirez or Postal, either way, is completely reasonable, and so is 114, 114. So, look, there were a bunch of close rounds, especially the last two. Uh, I know Andre Ward and Tim Bradley were having difficulty scoring. The, the, they were disagreeing on the early rounds. I thought Postal carried the early rounds. Um, and then Ramirez t- rallied in the in, in the middle, you know, in early late rounds, and then in the championship rounds, I, I, they were so close and not much separate. I mean, each of those eleven and twelve was so uh, so difficult to score. Um, but I gave him to uh, to post style. If you give him to Ramirez, that's fine, and then you have Ramirez win the fight. That's ultimately what the judges do. Did um, if you go to the scorecards, and I'm trying to pull them up right now, mostly. Uh, the three judges, yeah, the, he, uh, uh, of the three judges, he only got one round on one card, and that fight ended up being a draw. If any, if he would have given the twelfth, um, Postal would have won. Uh, the other card that had at one fifteen, one thirteen, gave both the last two rounds for Ramirez, and the card that had at one sixteen, one twelve, obviously gave him the last two rounds as well. So. What you saw here is because Ramirez clearly won the tenth. Well, Ramirez had to sweep the last three rounds to get this decision. If he doesn't sweep those three rounds um, on those two cards that he swept them on, he doesn't win this fight. It's a draw. If the one judge flips one round, so it, it was that kind of fight. And I think this does two things, right? I, I, I think first it shows that. Crawford's victory over a prime postal in which he lost the first round, and then won the next 11 and dominated him. And the drought, and the, that is way better performance than we thought it was. All right, that is a win. I, I always give him a lot of credit for it, but the you know, the casual boxing world doesn't love postal, um, so they kind of overlook it. But I, I think now that we saw that he arguably beat and fought Ramirez in his 50 50 life and death kind of fight three years later, four years, four years later, I, I think this kind of cements that that's a really good win for Crawford. Um, and I, I think it also shows a couple of things. Now, I don't know how long Pro Gray is going to stay at this division, but there's a two-man race in that division. And it's Taylor and Pro Gray, right? Uh, and Ramirez is third. He's beatable. Like He's not that good. He gets hit He gets hit a lot. Um, he was lightning quick in that hooker fight. Or maybe hooker's just a lot slower than I thought. But he was the fastest man in that ring, and he was getting inside. He didn't show any of that. In the, in, in, and he didn't show any of that in the Pedraza fight before it. I mean, the uh, Zepeda fight before it, and he didn't show any of it um, in this fight. So, I, I don't, he looked so good. Ramirez looked so good against Hooker. And I think it was a little bit false advertising. I think that was a once in a lifetime performance, kind of like Jojo Diaz had against Tevin Farmer. I, I don't think he can replicate that performance. Um, I, I think in a rematch, Postal would, would beat Ramirez, maybe. I think in a rematch, Hooker definitely beats Ramirez. Um, but I, I think Progray and Josh Taylor definitely beat him. I think Progray and Josh Taylor should fight again after Taylor beat Ramirez uh, for the undisputed strap. But, you know, it looks like potentially uh, Rougarou may go up to 147. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was I, I think Mario Barrios also beats Ramirez at 140. I know that he's on the WBC side. He has uh, on the PBC side, he has the WBA regular. Um, so they're not likely to fight, but I, I, I yeah, look, Barrios is kind of built like Ramirez, right? Um, so he, I mean, I'm sorry, Barrios is kind of built like Postal, right? They're kind of tall, lanky, rangy. Barrios is a better jabber, right? He's better defensively, even though he's not great defensively, he's better defensively, and he's got a ton more power than Postal. Postal has no power, uh. Barrios has one punch power, which we saw at Velasco. If you think I'm wrong, go back and watch the Velasco. He's got one punch power. So I don't agree. With, like, I, I, I think Barrios beats Ramirez. He, he, he executes the game plan that Postal did at range, set him up, hit it with right hand as opposed to the left hand from Postal, but set him up, keep him out. And with Barrios' power, he can't get in on him. And, and when he does, he's going to eat big shots, right? Like, I think Barrios stops him. I really do. You know, I, I think he fights the, the fight that Hooker did. Um, he fights by the hooker, but executes it better. He fights the fight that Postal did 
but with more power. So I, yeah, I, I think Ramirez be, I think uh, Ramirez loses to Rugaru. I think he loses to Taylor. Um, so I think Taylor gets undisputed, but then he'll move up to fight Crawford. You would imagine, and not fight Rugaru again. But who knows? Uh, and I think Mario Barrios beats him too. But Ramirez has got the win, and it's it's a good win. He eked it out. Uh, but I think that there's clearly two best guys. The two best guys in the division are Taylor and, and Progre, and then there's a drop ball. And I think the third best guy is Barrios, but he has to prove that with another big win. Um, he fights Ryan Carl on the Charlo undercard. Uh, but let me know what y'all think. Um, I was not ultra impressed with Ramirez. I was impressed with Laura, but it was what we've expected. To it, Lord, I don't know. Thoughts, comments below. Uh, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. Um, you can find me at all forms of social media, media 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Uh, you can find uh, my weekly article, uh, my Fighter of the Week Award at 3dboxingblog.com, as well as fightpost.uk. Um, and we're going to be taking a little break. Uh, my co-host is, is redesigning his studio in California. Uh, so we're not going to have an MCR podcast for the next couple of days, uh, but we should be back later this week or next week. Um, that's MCR, uh, That's Mixed Combat Radio, um, and we do a, a usually a bi-weekly, twice a week podcast um, on that show as well. Uh, and I should be back tomorrow, probably or the, probably tomorrow with a Dubois show. Uh, we're going to break down Dubois, uh, but remember to uh, follow me on all from social media. Hit the like button. I remember to subscribe, hit the bell icon from Texas to the world. Thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.